Hello, my friends. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about this uh, Apple SCSI CD-ROM. This is an external CD-ROM, normally to be used with the Monoblock Max, like uh, the Plus, for example, and others, like, uh, you know, the SE, like this one here. So this one was designed to be used with them. So it sits uh, right underneath. I'm seeing if I can shove it a picture here in the video so you can see how it goes. So this one I bought uh, from the US. So there was a seller in the US selling it. It was in good shape externally. Of course, um, it was sold as non-working because the guy said he didn't have the, the caddy. This is a caddy-based CD-ROM. And uh, well, I took the chance and uh, I bought it. So it arrived one week later, very fast shipping actually. And uh, when I tested it, it didn't seem to be working okay. Like uh, I have a caddy, I put a CD on, and uh, I heard some noise, like, uh, but I didn't really hear uh, the, the, the motor, for example, is spinning up or anything like that. And every time that I plug this into any computer that I have with SCSI port, uh, it basically disables the SCSI altogether. So the internal drive ceases to work, and uh, it doesn't matter what ID I put here. It basically doesn't take it, and uh, it doesn't work. So I opened it up, and I removed the CD-ROM unit here, as you can see, it's already open, and I removed the logic board. Let me just put this here down. And I removed the logic board from it, which is now sitting on top of my desk here. Uh, just looking at the bottom of it, you can see that there has been major damage here. There is some goo here, as you can see, probably traces were affected as well. I have to test that after cleaning this up. And look at where this is coming from. So basically we have a cluster of capacitors here and uh, this is coming exactly from, from it. So I already removed one. Unfortunately, the trace for this one here, one of the pads basically lifted up and uh, you can see that the damage is actually very bad. So. Just try to get some light here, but uh, it doesn't look good. You see, like uh, those caps leaked badly and probably the others in the board as well. So I'm going to remove them all and I'm going to do a very nice recap if possible. I'm not sure whether or not the pads are going to still be there when I remove those, those caps. Uh, hopefully uh, no more pads are going to be lifted up. If they are, uh, it just makes it miserable, you know, to solder new new caps here there's always ways of doing that you can basically detect where that pad was going to and try to get uh, you know uh, uh, one leg, leg of the cap going somewhere else that would be basically the same effect well similar to the same but uh, it's not ideal and it's a lot of work so i would do my best here to try to remove i'm going to use actually a heat gun here to remove those guys. It's just like um, safer, I think. Um, the way that I was doing before wasn't that great. So I'm trying to use a heat gun. The problem is there's a lot of other components around. So I have to protect them to make sure that the heat gun doesn't uh, no melt the solder on those guys as well. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to recap, uh, remove those first, clean everything up, recap, and then reassemble everything and hope for the best. Uh, that's basically what I can do. There is not much else. I think the mechanism is working fine because I was able to um, insert a caddy and uh, it also ejects it. So the mechanism seems to be okay. And I'm hoping that uh, the motor is also okay. It should be, I think. It's just a matter of the controller board here that is um, very, very damaged. So let's see if I can salvage that. If not, uh, well, that would be a shame because this is a very nice piece of machine. So stay tuned. I'm going to basically proceed with the removal of all the caps here. And uh, hopefully I will have uh, caps for replacement. I have to check. I really don't know. Okay, my friends. So I removed all the caps using my heat gun here. That's the proper way of doing that and uh, no pads were damaged or anything along the way and you can actually see if you look closely here let me see if i can focus how badly damaged those guys were like look at this one here the 
you see the leakage and this one for example look at that so the caps were totally wasted pretty much all of them which is kind of normal in you know old machines like that one uh, I think that CD-ROM is dated from 1993 or something like that so yeah it's pretty old and uh, those caps were bound to fail anyways so I'm pretty confident that uh, maybe I'll be able to restore that board uh, let me show you like the board right now so let me cut the video here and uh, go on to where the board is so this is the board bathed in vinegar uh, sorry about the noise it's just that uh, the I have that uh, the dryer machine here on I'm on the you know the utilities room here but uh, anyways I think you guys can hear my voice right and uh, this is the board soaked in vinegar and I'm trying basically to undo the damage especially on the other side of the board it was really really bad uh, a little bit corroded so hopefully uh, leaving the the board like this for maybe half an hour or so and then cleaning everything up we'll be able to revert the damage at least just some aspect of it another problem that I found was one of the pins on the SCSI connector here was actually bent all the way back so this could also be related to the problem very much likely to be uh, again very confident that by replacing the caps and uh, adjusting the spin here again I could have this uh, CD-ROM back up and running so let's see I'm going to give this some time to soak uh, hopefully neutralize the acids that has leaked from the capacitor and be able to clean the board up recap it and hope for the best okay my friends so this is the board recapped so I recapped those guys that you see here. Focus is not that great, but uh, let me see if I can improve that a little bit. Yeah. So those four guys, this little cluster here, that was the most problematic one uh, that uh, basically went to the other side of the board. I'm going to show you in a moment. So those were recapped properly. Um, then those here, as you can see, those is small 16 volts one and those three 47 16 ones so one two and three up here those were recapped as well so pretty much all the electrolytic caps were replaced uh, i also managed to fix the pin in the scuzzy connector that was bent all the way down it's looking perfect now and this is the other side of the board after the cleaning with the vinegar so it is, it is looking better but as you can see it's um it has corroded a lot like uh, this brown stuff that you see here is actually the bronze or the the, the copper um, part of the board so the the protection the green protection was corroded basically but apparently the traces are still good even though they look very bad they seem to be okay by the test that I, I ran through them. Uh, the leakage on the, this particular cluster here actually damaged the board fairly good as well. Uh, I managed to reuse the trace that uh, went off here, so it looks good now. But if you see in the surrounding areas here, you see how bad this looks. It's, uh, it was really nasty actually, see here and same goes in this part here so i'm not entirely confident that this uh, board is going to work there is also the problem of the height here of this uh, through hole caps that i used here they are basically going above you know the board profile uh, from what i tested uh, mounting the board back into the main frame here it seems to be okay like this extra height is not going to be a major issue apparently so only after finishing the mounting I'm going to be able to tell so that's what I'm going to do now I'm going to try to remount this back and uh, hope for the best really like uh, just see whether or not this will work as expected after this if it does man I'll be really really pleased because again this board was in really really bad shape
and uh, those guys are not easy to come across I could try to replace this SCSI slot based CD-ROM here with a more modern one like some people did but you know it defeats the whole purpose of having this unit in the first place uh, I wanted to keep it as original as I could so let's see if I am able to do it so let me reassemble everything and I'll get back to you guys okay guys so here's the first test as you can see I still haven't reassembled everything I laid everything up on uh, on top of the power supply here uh, protected of course so that there is no shorts or anything the cables are already connected to the logic board as you can see here and what I'm attempting now is so as you can see it's connected to the power here no SCSI connections or anything like that it's only power to the whole thing uh, just to make sure that the motor is going to spindle and uh, the mechanism to load and eject the, the caddy is going to work hopefully it will uh, I have no clue so uh, be aware that there is the laser uh, being here so um, if you're going to do something like that it's always good not to look into it protect your eyes uh, using some goggles or something like that because um, you know it could damage or cause some problems if you don't right so okay let's let's give it a shot so let me power it on here okay so it doesn't do much but uh, I think it's because there is nothing in there so I'm going to add a caddy with uh, Mac OS 8 here well, it's ejecting okay that's something at least the mechanism is still working well it, it wasn't doing that before I assure you like uh, Yeah, I can hear the noise of, you know, the, the laser head basically scanning the disc. And the motor is, is working, which I suspected it, it should be anyway. So apparently this board is now working, which is a good thing. So let's see the eject mechanism now. So I'm going to press the eject button, which is in this separate board here. And it works beautifully so it seems to be okay uh, at least electrically or uh, it looks fine you know uh, the motors are running uh, the loading and the ejecting mechanism seems to be working fine now it's really a matter of uh, basically putting everything back together and see whether or not this will work it wasn't working before and um, Again, like uh, my suspicious, uh, my suspicion was that um, the there was a bent SCSI uh, pin. Basically, it might be shortened, and uh, that was the reason it was disabling the SCSI devices in the other computers that I tested this in. But uh, for sure, the caps were a problem as well. Like the board was in terrible, terrible, terrible shape. So doing the recap will at least like prolong the life of this, and. Uh, well i'm happy it, uh, at least it seems to be working so i'm going to rebuild everything and hope for the best so uh wait here i'll be back with the final video i'm going to attempt to use my mac sc here to see whether or not it's able to detect that let's see so here's the setup for the final test i have here the cd-rom unit pre-assembled i still like the top missing that's the only thing that is actually missing so let me remove this here and uh, you can basically have a look on how it looks right so this was basically the defective uh, cd-rom unit that uh, has been fixed and this is my lc3 that i fixed in another video i tried to use my mac sc but for some reason i've got um, uh, a system address error and uh, even when i got it to work I got that um, I should unlock the CD-ROM for the desktop file to be saved. So don't know why, maybe it's because I'm running system six on those SCs. Uh, 
should not be it. But anyways, like uh, I couldn't get it to work there. But it is working on the LC3 with Mac OS, I think 7.5 running here. Let me just double check. But yeah, I think we have, yeah, 755, it's running on this one here. So it's, uh, in this one, it's actually working fine. So let me show you. I'm going to add Mac OS 8 install disk here. Right, so. And let's look at the desktop here. It should mount it. There we go. So it is working just fine. And uh, I'm so pleased about it because again, this is a beautiful machine and uh, it doesn't, you know, like uh, make sense to me to replace this beautiful caddy based CD-ROM original with uh, a modern one. Uh, especially because if you actually do it, the eject button and volume button and the headphone jack that is sitting down here you will eventually lose it so yeah it's um, it's not gonna look too nice so everything is working now if I eject the CD here dragging it to the trash I sh should see it there we go perfect so I'm just going to put the cover on and call it done uh, just one thing before I leave this guy here that is running on this LC tree is a uh, brand a new uh, blue SCSI board that arrived uh, last week. I saw a video on the internet about this as an alternative to SCSI 2SD and I bought one and it works amazingly well. So it is cheaper than SCSI 2SD. It actually costs uh, 40 pounds uh, pre-assembled already. It doesn't come in my case with um, the mounting base. So I have to figure this out later on. And uh, but other than that, like it works great and it's very easy to configure, actually easier than SCSI 2SD. So uh, this could be a good, great alternative for you guys to consider. Okay, that's it, guys. Bye.